Let's do math, algebra two, unit seven, lesson four is called describing distributions. Goal today, I can describe a distribution using characteristics of its shape, center, and spread, and I can use the standard deviation to describe the variability in a distribution. So go ahead, pause the, the video and take a look at the four graphs and tell me which one doesn't belong. It says that four different kinds of glass are hit with a hammer and the length of the longest crack formed is recorded. The process is repeated 150 times for each type of glass. So for A, this is the only histogram. A histogram has bars that are connected that represent your frequency and all the other ones are dot plots and it's the only one that includes a vertical axis. So we know for sure how high each one of these, these bars are versus um, on the dot plot, we don't know if, if, if each dot it represents frequency of one inch or two inches or whatever. Um, so it's a little harder to tell there. Second one, it has extreme values that may be outliers. So these values over here are potentially outliers because they're kind of far off from the rest of the data. Um, go to this one here. We say that it's um, not bell-shaped. It's actually bimodal because we have these two um, these two bell shapes kind of on the on the left side and the right side. And it's the only one with a mode that's not near the mean. Okay, the mode is the most frequent. So your mean is still kind of in the middle because it's still semi-symmetrical, not fully symmetrical, but but still kind of like if I put a line right here, it's kind of pretty close to being symmetrical. And then the last one, <clears throat> last one, um, it's measures of center are closer to five than 10. So, you know, you look at your, 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 your mean, which is somewhere kind of right there in the middle, because it looks almost like a normal distribution, except for a little bit of um, higher frequency right there around four. Um, but your, your mean is closer to five versus here. Your mean is more like 10. Same idea here. Here's your mean right in the middle at 10. And your mean is also right there at 10. <clears throat> All right. Take turns with your partner to select a dot plot and describe the distribution. For each distribution you describe, use the term symmetric, skewed, bell-shaped, uniform, and bimodal where appropriate. <clears throat> so this first one, I would say that it is symmetric and bell-shaped. Um, the next one, I would say it is skewed. And when you take a look at this here, because it's so flat and kind of bigger over here, we say that it's skewed left. Over here, same type of situation, but we say it's skewed right. And then the last one. I would say that it's approximately uniform. And I would say it's also approximately symmetric. Not fully symmetric. You got this one here's got four. You'd have to have four right there. You got this here at seven only has two dots. So very close, but not, not fully. All right, take turns with your partner to match a dot plot with the summary statistics for the data shown. For each match you find, explain to your partner how you know it's a match. For each match your partner finds, listen carefully to their explanation. If you disagree, discuss your thinking and work to reach an agreement. All right, so I look at this one here. I'm just going to kind of look around here. So D is definitely got most of its data over here to the right. I would say D probably has the the one that is the biggest mean. So when I look at my mean here of seven, I can probably say that this one goes with D. 
okay, just because I know the mean is, is biggest here. Um, let's go to one. I'm going to try to match this one here. I'm going to kind of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the, the mean is three, or you let's look at the median. The median is two. So <clears throat> the middle number is two. So obviously here, the middle, two is like the fourth number on that one. So that's not the middle number. Same thing here. I think if I count these dots, I think there's 30 total on all the graphs. So two is the five, eight, it's the nine, 10, 11th number. So I don't think two's in the middle there. Whereas here, I think it is in the middle. Um, it might be easier to count from the right. So one, two, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 14. So 15, yeah, so two is my, my median. So I'm going to put that one there. Now, when I look at two and three, I can't use mean or median to um, separate the two. So I'm going to go to standard deviation. So if you have a smaller standard deviation, that means more of your data is, your data is clo closer to your mean. So when you look at B versus A, on B, more of my data is closer to my mean. My mean is five. I have a lot of data very close to it. Okay, like when I look here, I have a lot of data very, very close to the mean. I only have like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points far from the mean. Okay, whereas when I look here, I look at the same numbers from like three to seven. Same area, it's much smaller amount of data points closer to my mean. So this is going to have a larger standard deviation because it deviates farther from the mean. So I can right away, I can say, okay, this one, three goes with A which would mean that two would have to go with B, okay? <clears throat> so that's how I would do that um, without actually calculating everything. <clears throat> All right, data here. We got set A, got set B. They plotted them on, um, as, on a dot plot. What's the shape of each distribution? So when I look at one, <clears throat> number one, um, I guess it's not numbered one, but when I look at the first one, um, I could say that, that A is uniform, set B is bell-shaped. I would say that they're both symmetric. Okay. What do you notice about the mean and median of each distribution? Um, the mean and median are, are equivalent, and they're exactly right in the middle. So, you know, if I found my median, I'd just count, you know, two, 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 two. So the middle number would be really the, the average of those two. So it'd be four or it would be your median. And then your mean would also be the same because if I... You know, basically to find my mean, I would have to, if I really wanted to find it, you know, I, it's like I have two twos, so it's like two times two. And I have two threes, so it's plus, that was supposed to be a plus. Two times three, two fours, two fives, and two sixes, and then I would divide that by the 10 numbers. That'll give me my mean, which ends up being four. Same thing over here. You'll get the same mean um, and median. You get nine for both of them. So what do you notice? I would say that the mean and median are the same 
in each set. Set A equals four. Set B equals nine. Um, I would also say maybe something about symmetry when when it's when it's symmetrical when it's a symmetrical data set. Okay, we know that that is going to be your mean and your median. All right, which data set has a greater standard deviation? Um, that's kind of like we did on the other question. I would say set A because there are more numbers that are further away. Okay, if I were to if I were to box in the the two in the middle, the two numbers right next to the, my my median, notice there's four points outside of there. <clears throat> Whereas over here, there's only two points outside there. So I would say set A has a larger standard deviation or greater standard deviation. Claire says if you add 20 to the highest value in the data set, that both the mean and median will increase. Do you agree with Claire? Explain your reasoning. So this is kind of unclear. Do you add another value that's 20 greater, or do you just kind of like cross off the last one and, and put like a dot out here at, at 26? Uh, obviously, I'd have to extend this and maybe put a broken axis here. Same thing there. Do I just move that out here to 26? I'm not really sure. But... It's not going to change your median because this is still the greatest value. So like if I count, you know, if I start count crossing off one from each side, it doesn't matter if I cross off the 26 or the 11. Same thing here. It doesn't matter if I cross off the 2 and the 6 or instead of that 6, I cross off the 26. So I would say that um, your median will definitely not change, but your mean will. will get greater or will become greater. Okay. So I can describe a distribution using the character characteristics of its shape, center, and spread. And I can use the standard deviation to describe the variability in a distribution. Those were the goals. Hopefully, hopefully we're good with those. All right, the last thing. The distribution has a mean of 50 and a median of 50 and a standard deviation of 25.82. Draw an example of a dot plot with a bell-shaped distribution that has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation that is less than 25.82. So we're going to have to move our, our data closer to the, the mean. So let's count how many dots are in here. So let's see here. This is 12. No, that's 16 plus 6, 22, 20. So there's 50 total dots here. No. Is that right? No, man. This is 12. I'm sorry, I, I screwed that up. So that's 12 plus 6 is 18, 24. It was actually 30 dots. Okay. So 30 dots total. So what I need to do is I need to make more of my dots closer to the the mean. So I'll put a bunch right here, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'm going to put a couple here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 22, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then I'll put one there. I think I counted 30, um, double count them. But do you see how I, what I did was my, my data got squished towards the mean. So it's deviating less from the, 
from the mean. Therefore, it has a lower standard deviation. So it's less than, than that one. Okay? All right. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.